very smart. They're doing really well. Um, so anyway, I'm going to stop stop blabbing. Uh, if anybody has any questions, that'd be great. Um, if you want to try and limit them to the actions and filters around, that would be even better. <laughs> so. Can you give like a, a visual example of a page where you used an action or took one away? I, I mean, I, I think maybe what I developed isn't as complex as maybe what you're probably doing here. So, um, uh, so and that's what the the example of the code here would be. Uh, let's remove some actions. Let me go make sure that we can see what's going to be removed. Um, so you see right here, this is the uh, this is where the CSS gets added, and then I'm adding some an object. Basically, I'm adding data to the head. It doesn't really matter what the data is. I'm adding data. And so right here, this file, which if you want to look at the code, it, it explains how it removes it, um, which is very straightforward, just like all the other stuff, and, and commented as well. Um, it basically goes in to initiate and says, hey, remove this stuff. Just don't even do it. Don't even register those, those don't even register the CSS. Don't even register the NQ script. Don't, don't register the, the object. Just don't do those things. So it disappears. Um, and it's, it's much better than trying to get in. And, I mean, that's just how it's done. That's why WordPress created those things, to make removing those items just so much easier. Um, and I'm, let's see, remove, remove some filters, remove some actions. So remove, I mean, removing actions was, was literally, I, I deregistered my scripts, and then I removed my, I removed the functions that actually enqueue them. So WordPress doesn't have to go and look and see if they exist anymore, because we know they don't exist. We deregistered them. And we, we told these functions not to run. Don't run anymore. <laughs> and uh, we told the filters not to run anymore either. Don't, don't do anything. Um, and what makes that simple is all the organization. It's knowing when things fire and, and, and what, at what point in time they happen. Um, because then you can say, and it's just it's the exact same thing. I'm running it on initiate. And I'm running it with the priority of the left. Because I know from my other file exactly when it's happening and, and where it's happening. I can basically, I copied and pasted that file, changed some of the function names, and added, added the priority for it. It was that simple, because I, I just knew. I've um, been fooling around with WordPress for about five years now, and um, it's only been the last six months or so that I've, I've tried to begin to decipher some of the development side, mm -hmm. and PHP and whatnot. Um, for someone in, in, that, uh, in that place, mm -hmm. Um, in addition to the codex, what, what resources would you recommend? Um, resources, it's really kind of what your flavor of learning is. There are tutorials, you know, like, I really couldn't take a tutorial, so I haven't been to one in a long time. Randomly, you'll find one. I mean, like, what's the uh, Invanto? Codes Plus? Yeah, Codes yeah. Plus, yeah, that's I've pretty seen, good. I've yeah. seen them do some really mm -hmm. quality stuff. And sometimes you'll happen upon a random site that has just like some code, and you're like, whoa, this is this code, I don't know if I, I trust it, but I've never seen this function before. You see a function, and you're like, oh, I think that's what I'm looking for. And you go look for it. Um, personally, I like diving into the, to the core code um, on, a, on a different level. If I'm looking for something, I'll try and find it in the codex first. I'll read everything that's there, and I'll try and decipher it, maybe work with it. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of PHP XREF. It's a, it's a, I think it's a Perl script that basically processes PHP and it organizes it for you. Um, those are really great. Um, it lets you sift through the code by clicking. Um, it's really cool. That's been a, a huge help for me. I'll also just say if, if you have, um, like you have to kind of have the role, like what, like just going to read about, you know, developers is, is kind of so broad that you're going to just be spending hours looking for something. So to find a functionality that you want. And then there's plenty of resources to look up that one functionality. Agreed. It is difficult because I was when I started, I was opening up other people's things, the free themes, and I was just like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. And I was just like, ah, I don't know. So I grabbed a function, the post, and I was like, what is the 
do. Like this po the post function is just weird because it just hangs out. It's just there. But then when you go look at it, you get more confused. <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, there's just so much stuff in here. Um, but at least, you know, that's that's basically how I got into finding information was just looking at the core code or looking at the code of the theme, trying to figure out how they're doing stuff. Yeah. Just one more thing, Mike. If you're into, if you're okay with reading to learn, uh, sure. Chris Coyer has uh, digging into WordPress. Um, oh, right. Really good, faith, you know, book to cover the basics of development from in WordPress. No, I, I, I'm very encouraged because I've I've been to these resources and I'm wondering if yeah, it's reputable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the right place. Yeah, Thank you. really good book. So, question relating to kind of the object-oriented approach you're taking class structures. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it seems like where are you actually reusing class, you know, calling yes. class and like reusing it? Would that, is that solely just for like when you're doing child theme development? Um, well, these classes in particular are simply because I'm used to writing that way. Mm -hmm. These classes in particular do not need to be classes. Okay. I like using these classes because it helps me write function names that are easy to understand. Right. So, so a class a class that um, is reusable. I wrote a class that writes an options page. Um, I can basically feed this gigantic array to my class, and it creates an options page. I tell it where to go, what to do. I tell it how many meta boxes I want. I tell it what's in the meta box. So, so that's where it really comes. Exactly. Yeah. And then, so you know, the class level the structure of programming is kind of you know, it's, it's another step up. I'm mm -hmm. just figuring out functions and callbacks, things like that. So, would you say that? Um, you know, if you're just adding functions into your functions file for your theme, doing simple like is admin check to load your admin code, you know, kind of an equivalent of what you're doing here with your class. It is to some degree. Um, it, it, it is admin check. Um, I would say a lot of things have already happened yes, when you get yes. to that point. But I, yeah, once you accomplish the same thing. Basically, you're accomplishing the same thing. Right. Um, I mean, and just a side note, I don't know if there's any wrong with using his admin in the functions file, but if you are just adding to the admin, you may as well just write a function and add it to that action, admin initiate. Yeah. The same function, um, but now what you're doing is you're creating a function that you can actually grab, copy, and paste, <coughs> and quite possibly use somewhere else. So the whole point of also writing things like this is reusable code. Right. Um, that is now, I don't have to rewrite every single one of those functions. I copied the class, changed the class name, and then I'm reusing everything. Names are exactly the same. So it's in that sense, it, it's like it's not really. It doesn't really need to be a class. It's just so much. Oh yeah. No, I get it. So yeah. <laughs> just wanted to. Yeah. Get, oh, definitely. Get on that. And if priority is not defined, it's ten. Yes. Okay. Always. And there's a fourth fourth parameter in in these act in these functions, and that parameter always it still hurts my brain. It's arguments. You can basically add arguments on, and it goes. Um, I don't know how to explain that because it's kind of one of these things that you have to play with and learn. Um, because there's good reasons to add arguments. I think in, by default they all add one argument. So you have the option to add one, but you can add many. Um, and it defaults to one. But I typically have never added more than two. If you're adding more than two, you probably have a good reason for it and you know what you're doing. Um, so. A total new question. Um, if we're not putting this in functions, where are we putting this code? Um, mostly it gets called from the functions, actually. If you're writing a, if you're writing a theme, um, it has to come from the functions in some form or fashion. What I typically do, first thing I'll do is actually include a bunch of my files. I have a little folder full of all of the functions and classes and all the different types of things that I want to be able to call upon. Mm -hmm. And in the functions file, I go and require the ones that I want to require. Some of them you can require when the page loads, you're like, okay, we need that file, let's load it. Um, but otherwise, I'll just include my entire library, which is not super bloated, so I feel okay doing that, but you, know, you want to be careful. But it is definitely starting from the functions. Um, that is, that is, as far as I know, that is one of the, that is the only file that, that um, just gets called when WordPress loads. Everything else is very dependent on what's going on. If it isn't a plugin, which takes priority? Is it the functions or the plugin? Or they plugins are equally, load first. The 
plugins or before the functions? plugins load first, and okay. that is one reason why if you're writing a plugin, knowing about these actions, and adding to these actions, to me, so important. I right? get so frustrated when plugins don't use actions. Um, the best example of a really good plugin is the Yoast SEO plugin. His code is amazing. Uh, I'm not going to say that. I don't know why. It's amazing because I can man it. I can manipulate it. Like I wrote um, a website that does property stuff, and we wanted to add all the SEO stuff to it. I filtered all of his posts, or all of his functions, added all the SEO stuff, and I didn't have to write it myself. It was awesome. And he's even got you know the, the open graph stuff, so I added all the open graph stuff. I just built all of his functions. And I was just so happy because I have already written all that crap in the past. And then I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. I'm rewriting code. I should not be rewriting code. This plugin, this plugin should have filters. I should just go look and see if it has filters. And it did. And it saved me an entire day worth of code for an hour. I was just so happy. I think we're pretty much done. There's nobody here to tell me so, but we should get going. Yeah.